Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast, where you can hear interviews with special guests such as Dayon Buchanan, Tom Waddle, Pierre Desir, Brent Barry, Ed Werder, and many others. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. So be sure to subscribe and tune in to the CS Podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash christianre722. Did you not get the memo? That's www.youtube.com slash christianre722. For great interviews, be sure to check out the CS Podcast. You are ridiculous! Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Shanafell, and I'm now joined by former Boston College defensive back who uh, signed with the San Diego Chargers as an undrafted rookie free agent shortly after the 2015 NFL draft ended. He's Manuel Espria. How's it feel to be a Charger, Manuel? It feels great. So, you know, looking back at your college football career, man, well, it was a pretty solid one. You were able to uh, get a lot of playing time right away as a freshman. You started the final four games, and since then, you pretty much started every single game since then. Uh, Throughout your four years at BC, you racked up 201 tackles, 23 pass deflections, 15 tackles for loss, four interceptions, two forced fumbles, and a sack. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, early on, it was pretty tough team-wise. You guys weren't having a a ton of uh, success team wise uh but these last couple of seasons um ha- have been a bit better for you guys you guys appeared in a couple of bowl games overall how would you describe your bc eagles football career it was enjoyable you know uh there was a lot of lessons learned um we've matured we matured as a team so i also matured uh by myself too individually and um you know the first couple of years they were tough we were in losing seasons no bowl games and, you know, it was just a hard time for all of us, especially since we were, we were young at the time. And um, when you're young, you know, a lot of things go through your mind. You start pointing your fingers, doing all those things. And, uh, you know, as uh, when the new coaches came in, we started to change. Uh, our team became closer, and, you know, we started gaining a little success. Coming into Boston College in 2011, was your ultimate goal to receive a shot in the National Football League? Was that always the dream? Yeah, that was always a dream, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a dream. It was always the goal. Uh, people have always, you know, doubted. People are always getting doubted everywhere. But, you know, people doubted me. And, you know, I always had my mindset that I was going to make it no matter what, whether it was getting drafted or not. I always said that as long as one team would give me that opportunity, I, I would take that opportunity and run with it. And when did you realize that playing in the NFL was something that was actually a possibility for you? At the end of my senior year season, um, you know, after those first uh, couple of years at Boston College when um, we were having a tough time, I even doubted myself. I didn't think that, you know, anything would happen. And I started looking elsewhere at a, a plan B. And at the beginning of my junior season, I still was looking at a plan B. Like, I still doubted myself even a little bit, even though we started gaining a little success. And then at the end of my senior season, uh, before it even happened, like started, I always said, um, I already said, um, if – I didn't play the way I wanted to play, the way I expected to play, that I wouldn't even take that shot and try and go to the league. But at the end of my senior season, I, I said it would it'd be, it'd be worth it. And, Manuel, uh, you know, the NFL draft was uh, April 30th to May 2nd. You didn't hear your name called, but you did receive a, a phone call from the San Diego Chargers. Can you take us through that process if you can? I can't think that they were the only team that showed interest in you. So at the end of the day, how did you decide to uh, join the San Diego Chargers? You know, it was a stressful process. Um, you know, the first day, I already knew my name wouldn't be called the first day during the first round. It was it was obvious. I already knew that. You, already, you kind of already know who's going to get called. Um, but teams were calling me a couple of days before that. And uh, so I, I got to know which teams were a little interested and which teams weren't. And then as the process was going on, as the rounds went on, um, I knew I wouldn't even have to, like, look at the draft. I still watch the draft and to see all the names called. It was, you know, it was kind of exciting to see all the names called, but at the same time, nerve-wracking. And when the last two rounds maybe was going by, that's really when I started, you know, shaking and everything because that's when I was really nervous because maybe I could have uh, gotten called maybe in the last round of anything. But, you know, I already knew, like, I was basically a free agent. I was going to be a free agent. And as soon as the Chargers made their last pick, I got the phone call. And then after, uh, after the seventh round, I got other teams calling me. But because the Chargers gave me the first call, 
I kind of went with them. It was kind of how I even I chose BC. The first team to give me the offer, the first team to believe in me is the team that I wanted to work with. Awesome, awesome. So, like you said, you're really just paying attention to those uh, final two rounds, and obviously it would have been nice to have been drafted, but at the end of the day, all you need is an opportunity, as you know, Manuel. Uh, can you tell us about that phone call that you received after the draft uh, by the Chargers, and what was your reaction when you were informed that uh, you will indeed be joining the Chargers? At first, I couldn't even believe it. Uh, you know, I answered the phone, we, we spoke for a little bit, and when I made my decision, I was kind of like, just quiet. I didn't really realize what I just did, you know. It, it, and then it took me a little while. It took a little while for it to really hit me. And then that's that's really how it went. I was just I was too in shock to really react to the phone call. I didn't um, jump up and down with joy. I didn't, you know, I didn't cry anything like that. I was just in shock. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, I, I certainly couldn't even imagine it. Um, now, looking back, March uh, March 18th, you had your pro day, and it looked like you had a, a pretty solid day. You recorded a, a 4 5 40, 36 inch vertical, 9 foot, 10 inch broad jump, 7 5 1 3 cone drill. Uh, where, if anywhere, were you training at, and uh, how do you feel about the numbers that you put up? I was um, training at the Marblehead Fitness Center. Uh, there was a great group of trainers there. They really helped me out and everything and took care of me. And uh, I wasn't really impressed with the numbers I put up because I worked really hard with them. And they really worked hard, worked really hard with me. And they sort of were, um, they were sort of content with what the numbers were, but I knew I could have done better. Uh, there were a couple times where I messed up even during the pro day, like during some of the drills. And, you know, I didn't let it get me down, though. I just kept moving on and and tried to clear my mind of it. And, you know, when when, I, when it was all said and done, I just had to be happy with what, what happened. Uh, I, would, I knew I wouldn't get another shot at it. But, you know, it, it, everything worked out for the best. You're absolutely right about that. Once again, former Boston College cornerback and one of the newest members of the San Diego Chargers, Manuel Espria, joining the CS podcast. And Manuel, obviously playing at Boston College, you're in the ACC, so you've been able to play against this year's number one overall pick, uh, Jameis Winston and the Florida State Seminoles. And actually, this past season, you guys almost pulled up the upset. Um, do you believe the Bucks are in good hands with Jameis Winston at the helm? I believe they are. He's a great player. All right, well, obviously, and I know this draft process just ended, uh, what advice would you give to anybody entering next year's draft? I mean, is there anything that you ran into personally uh, that might have caught you off guard or anything? Probably just, um, I don't really know. The, the more thing that really would get to somebody is probably their mental state. It's not about anything physical, anything like that, you know, it's just about you being yourself, you, you staying true to yourself and, and not trying to overthink anything or, you know, like try and stress over things. You have to try and keep a, a clear, clear mind is what I would say is the best advice to keep a clear mind because, you know, things, things will happen. You may be working out and training for a certain test and things might not be going the way you thought it would be or your numbers might not be looking a certain way at one point. But, you know, things change. At, at one point, my bench wasn't high at all. I wasn't really where I was, where I wanted to be. And then come pro day, things just change. Things happen, you know. You just can't get down on yourself. You just got to keep a clear mind. Hey, well said, well said. What do you feel separates you from any other defensive back that was a part of this rookie class? What's unique about your game? I have no fear. That's be fear. I don't care how big you are, how small you are, how fast you are, how slow you are. I'm going to give you everything I got, every play. I'll never back down for you whether you beat me or not. It is what it is. San Diego Chargers rookie cornerback out of Boston College, Manuel Espria, joining the show. And uh, it, obviously, it's not going to be an easy transition. You're going to be playing against the best of the best. Uh, what do you anticipate will be the hardest part about transitioning from the college game to the pros? I don't really know. I was told the same thing when I was coming out of high school that I was going to be playing against the best players in the country going into college. And I have the same mindset I do now. I, it doesn't really phase me. I just. I just got to go in there and show what I can do. If he's going to play his best, then I got to bring my best. Mm -hmm. That's just how it's got to be. And, and when exactly are you going to be reporting to the Chargers rookie minicamp? I'll be reporting. I'll be flying out this Sunday. So I'll be reporting Monday. Uh, are you going in with a chip on your shoulder? Uh, you know, being undrafted, I mean, are you going in with something to prove? I'm going everywhere with something to prove. It's not about being undrafted. It's just about 
how the world looks at me. They don't look at me as the uh, the perfect football player, I would sort of speak. You know, I got to be a certain size. I got to be a certain weight. I got to be a certain speed. That's the chip I'm going in with, not being undrafted. Hey, well, sounds good. Uh, safe travels to San Diego, Manuel. Congratulations on joining the San Diego Chargers. And uh, thank you very much for taking some time out of your busy day to chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate the phone call. All the best, Manuel. Thank you. You too.